quickly. The other study that's been published by Andrew Way now in uh, JCO just this year um, was the phase 1B experience with low dose RSC and venetoclax. Again, the venetoclax ramped up to 600 milligrams very quickly. Um, and in that regimen, the response rate was a little lower, just above 50%. And that's probably because they did accept patients who had received prior HMAs. And um, if you look at the prior HMA exposure patients, the responses were only about 35%, and only 5% of those were uh, complete remissions. So um, a little um, a signal there that prior HMA exposure uh, may predict for more resistance. But unfortunately, this is what we see in patients who have failed prior HMA um, uh, exposure and treatment is that they have a very poor outcome due to resistance to therapies. So this is a very, very promising regimen. And what make, makes it um, so exciting is that we knew, now really do have a regimen with a very high response rate in these older, infirm patients. But I still think we need to be cautious about how we use it and, and uh, give it safely uh, to patients with uh, AML. So when you have an AML patient now who would qualify for one of these studies and you're going to choose one of these two, how do you choose hypomethylating versus uh, the low-dose RSC? Yeah, um, uh, it's, a, it's a great question. I tend not to use a lot of low-dose RSC. Um, low, the benefit of low-dose RSC is it's a subcutaneous injection. It's a tiny dose, 20 milligrams, a flat dose you can give. Mm -hmm. There are many different regimens, but that's one of them. And so you could give it at home but you can't give it at home. That's the problem. Uh, you know, home med um, companies often do not give this chemotherapy at home. And so that's been the biggest challenge. If we can make that easier, I think that would be a very um, attractive way of treating patients because they wouldn't have to come in for that first week. Now, having said that, at least for that first cycle, I'm happy that they're coming in for that first week because I want to monitor them closely during the ramp up for tumor lysis syndrome anyways. Um, and quite frankly, during that first cycle, they're coming in at least twice a week, maybe three times a week for transfusion support because it's a marrow failure syndrome. Um, so I generally use uh, an HMA. Um, I think um, the response is about the same, you know, taking into account that the low dose RSC had some HMA failures, and that's why it might be a little bit lower. But it's really that, you know, I'm c accustomed to using an HMA in that setting. And you mentioned that the durability of the response is generally good, sort of when you look at the overall population. Uh, but do you see differences in terms of the molecular subtypes? Yeah, there? unfortunately, the TP53 patients still um, have a very short duration of response. Mm -hmm. Um, I have used it in that situation because chemotherapy um, leaves a lot to be desired as well, and my own experience has been that you can get a response, but the response is quite short. So if you're thinking about curative options for a patient, you need to get them quickly to a transplant. And you know, as you've mentioned, the data that have been presented so far have been mainly in an older, frailer population. Have you extrapolated that to a younger AML and population yet? This, this is going to be a very important issue. I'm sure it'll work there. I, I mean. Um, and, and honestly, I will use that regimen in, some, in a younger patient um, with um, comorbidities that might not completely preclude chemotherapy, but especially in patients with high-risk disease, uh, with P53, complex karyotypes. The duration is short, but let's face it, the goal in those patients is going to be to get them to a transplant. Now, what I don't know is treating them with intensive chemotherapy getting them into remission, and then a transplant, if that outcome is going to be as good as uh, HMA ven based regimen achieving a remission and then transplant. We don't know the answer to that um, yet. Um, but in a patient who's a little bit younger and uh, infirm in some way, I do think it's an option for them. What I'm concerned about, though, is that this is a regimen that will be eas more easily given outside of, you know, major academic centers, you know, uh, you don't need to admit these patients uh, for therapy. And I think we really still need to remember, um, or at least think about, what is the goal of treatment right from the start? Is the goal of the treatment cure, or is the goal palliation? If the goal is cure, then we really have no data to support using HMA venetoclax in that setting. And we have to think about the most appropriate chemotherapy regimens to use to get a patient to a transplant.